Welcome to Cathedral of Hope today, and thank you for spending part of your day with us. My name is Reverend Jeremy, and you probably know me as Facebook CFAM person here at Cathedral of Hope. In just a few minutes, we're going to get our worship started. Our service will feature some fabulous music, inspiring scripture, and our senior minister, Reverend Neil, is going to offer a message, and we'll wrap up with an offering and the sharing of communion. Speaking of communion, we believe that all people are invited to take part in communion, no matter where you are or what background you're from. So we invite you to find whatever you have in your pantry so you can participate in this special meal from home. As we're waiting for worship to get started, now is a great time to check in. Just follow the link in the comments to register your attendance and offer any prayer requests and celebrations you'd like us to attend to over the coming week. Now there are many ways to stay connected to Cathedral of Hope throughout the week. In the description of this video, we are offering links to our small groups, our weekly email, and of course our Facebook CFAM. Make sure to check them all out. Finally, we post content throughout the week on Facebook and YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and follow buttons. And if you like the worship service, please give it a thumbs up and hit the share to invite your friends to worship with you. With all that said, worship is going to begin in just a minute. Find your favorite recliner, sofa, or beanbag chair, and we'll get started shortly. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, Hope Sunday. I'm Reverend Aaron Wyma, one of the associate ministers of Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. Thank you for sharing time with us as we journey together towards Christmas. We begin our service by joining members of the Sanctuary Choir and one of our very special families as we light the candle of hope together. the first candle, the candle of hope, reminding us that in sending Christ, God sent hope to the earth. Hope for a world free from war and pain. 
hope for a sense of purpose and belonging, and hope for peace and prosperity for our children and our children's children. When Christ came, he brought us the light of lights, light that fills us with hope, illuminates our lives, and shines in our hearts. Let us pray. God of light, we pray today that you will fill us with hopeful expectation and that you will cause us to become your children of light. Help us to spread your light into the world around us. Help us to recognize our opportunities to brighten the lives of others. Help us to live each day as beacons of love filled with joy, peace, and hope. Amen. modern lesson is from our Advent study book, Lo, an honest Advent devotional by John Pavlovitz. Hear these words. Hospital delivery rooms are places where smiles often come easily. They are, after all, spaces built specifically for welcome, and the expectancy when we're standing there is palpable. In delivery rooms, hope is almost an involuntary response. So on many days, we may struggle with the news in front of us. A baby is a tangible reminder that something new is always unfolding, even in the midst of repetitive pain and injustice. The Christmas narrative is that of hope arriving. The occasion is one pregnant with possibility. May God bless the hearing of these new words. Amen. There's a rose in Bethlehem with a beauty quite divine sent to bring us peace within in our lonely troubled time there's a fragrant marsh like home that
Today's gospel is from the first chapter of Luke. Hear these words. In the days of the ruler Herod, there was a priest named Zechariah. His wife Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron. They were childless and both were advanced in years. Now it was the turn of Zechariah's priestly class to serve. And as he was fulfilling his priestly office before God, an angel appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was deeply disturbed and was overcome with fear. And the angel said to him, Don't be frightened, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son whom you will name John, and he will be your joy and delight, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of our God. He will go before God as a forerunner to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the rebellious to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for our God. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man, and my wife too is advanced in age. The angel replied, I am Gabriel, who stands before God. I was sent to speak to you and bring you this good news. But because you have not trusted my words, you will be mute until the day these things take place. They will all come true in due season. And sometime later, Elizabeth conceived. She went into seclusion for five months, saying, Our God has done this for me. In these days, God has shown favor to us and taken away the disgrace of having no children. This is the gospel of hope. Praise to you, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we are certainly entering the Advent season here at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ, and there will be unique and wonderful opportunities for us to gather throughout this season. Watch for more information. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and it is that Sunday when we think about hope. So as we go into this word, would you pray with me? Good and gracious God, thank you for the hope that still lives within us, even in the midst of a pandemic. Thank you for the ways in which our lives represent hope, not just for ourselves and for our neighbors, but for our world as we rely on the faith that has moved mountains. And so, God, as we now come before you on this day, this first Sunday in Advent, we pray, God, that you would open our hearts and our minds by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that that same Spirit that was with Zechariah and Elizabeth and with the prophets and with all those who were involved in this Christmas story would still be with us this day. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, this is the first Sunday of Advent, and yes, a little different here at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, than perhaps we have been used to, or perhaps even accustomed to. But there's something unique about having an opportunity to think again about the Christmas story. And believe me, over these last nine months leading up to this season of Advent, we've had time to think about the Christmas story, but more than just the Christmas story, to think about the relevance of the birth of this child more than 2,000 years ago, this one we call Jesus, this one we proclaim Christ. To think again about the story and perhaps to take a step back from the formality or the normality of the story, a story that so often is engendered with, with light and with love and with hope and with faith. All of those qualities of Jesus still exist. But in the context of where we find ourselves today, we ask ourselves perhaps a different question. The, perhaps the question is, what is Christmas? Christmas is that's the theme of our sermons over these next four weeks as we ask ourselves, how is Christmas? Christmas is hope today, and hope, as I've said so often throughout these last nine months, hope is not just in our name. Hope is really what we are about, that resemblance of hope, that system of hope, that beauty of hope that lives through us. And it is the hope of the Christmas message that hits us this morning, the hope of what this Jesus would bring to the world. And as I was thinking about this hope over these last few weeks, I was thinking about this story and what was the context of the world? What was the context of the story? What was the world looking for in this presence of hope? Hope. 
It's not just in our name. It is the reality of who we live by. And the hope that Jesus was offering to bring to the world more than 2,000 years ago was a hope in a system of resistance. Many who were looking to the stars, looking for this Jesus, looking for a sign that would bring forth in them some kind of liberation. The systems of oppression that so many lived under more than 2,000 years ago, under the oppression of Roman rule, under the oppression of those who were in leadership, who seemed to want to always oppress those who were underneath them. Sound familiar? We have a story throughout history that talks about hope in resistance. And the story of hope in Jesus was not a story of a Jesus who came to claim power or perhaps to even overthrow the powers of the day, but was to engender within those who would believe the resistance that would bring about hope, the resistance that would give them the persistence to be able to carry on the story of Jesus long after his birth and long after his death, so much so that here we are more than 2,000 years ago celebrating hope in this Christmas story. The people of old saw in Jesus a hope for a better today and a better tomorrow. They followed the star. They looked to the prophecies. They looked to the lives that were being transformed on the journey towards the birth. And in these next four weeks, we will relive the story, the story of prophecy, the story of hope, the story of lives that were changed, the story of resistance that led to this birth in a stable, a resistance that was not contained in those who had power, but was contained in those who were without was contained in the poor and the oppressed, the marginalized. It was in them that the story of Jesus' birth was revealed. And we will follow that story over these next few weeks so that we too might come with that expectancy, this Advent expectancy, just as our modern lesson reminded us. A modern lesson from low that reminds us of the tangible reminder that something new is always unfolding, even in the midst of repetitive pain and injustice. The writer would say the Christian narrative is that of hope arriving. The occasion is one pregnant with possibility. Resistance gives us that possibility of something new. And we have certainly had to find a place within our world to experience the resistance. The resistance against power. The resistance against those who would want to oppress. The resistance against the systems of oppression that have brought forth all of the isms and the xenophobia of our world. It is the same for Jesus as it is for us. That this story is not just about a a, a neat manger scene, but this story is pregnant with possibilities that last for generations and generations. It is in some way the story of the world. In the same way that hope was born at the very foundations in the creation story, hope is also found in the resistance of a baby coming to this earth more than 2,000 years ago, to live in the world, to breathe in the world, to experience all that we would experience and to remind us that resistance always comes through. A resistance to the powers that be. A resistance to empire. A resistance to the systems of oppression. You see, this story is not just about a Jesus born into the world. This Advent gospel, this Advent story is one with great possibilities when we stand on the hope in the midst of resistance. A story that dramatically changed the world and has the potential to change the world even in our world today to find within us our faith story, our faith experience, the hope that we have looked to over these last nine months, the hope of a better tomorrow. And to understand that resistance comes with responsibility, a responsibility to stand on our faith journey, to stand on the story of Jesus. It's why our mission statement is to proclaim Christ through faith, hope, and love, because it is that hope that has journeyed with us. It is the hope that founded this church 
50 years ago in resistance to the ways in which the Christian denominations of its day denied the freedom to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals. Our church was born in resistance and the resistance to the powers that would say that some are in and some are out. This birth of Jesus offered hope to a marginalized peoples of its day. And this hope, even as we stand on the promises of Christmas today, offers us the potential to find that hope in the resistance of who we are as Cathedral of Hope, not just in 1970, but in 2020. To be born into the occasion with possibilities the Christmas narrative is that of hope arriving. And it, that hope arrives in the story of a babe being born to Mary and Joseph and born in us this day. A babe that was born to Zachariah and Elizabeth, even though they were past their childbearing years. A hope that still exists is the story of Christmas. How do we live into that hope ourselves? How do we resist to become just like every other institution, just like every other church, and find our power and stand on that power without reminding ourselves that we were born in resistance? And how do we claim that? So that when we say that we are a church who are loving God, loving people, all people, that we are a vibrant, inclusive, and progressive congregation of the United Church of Christ, how do we continue to resist the temptation of just being like every other church, but still continue to offer hope in the midst of the resistance? I still hear stories every single week of folks who come before me, or folks who email me, or folks who Zoom me, and ask how they can be a Christian. It is the resistance, resisting the dominant culture, resisting the temptation to, to say that we've somehow arrived, to resist that temptation and to live continually into the hope that we have been given. It was the story of Jesus coming to a manger scene on that first Christmas season, that first experience of hope being born in the world. But that hope was in resistance. For after that birth, they would have to flee from the powers that be that would try to undermine the purpose of Jesus. Friends, as we begin this Advent season, yes, we celebrate hope. But we understand that that hope is born in resisting the temptations to just be like everybody else. Jesus be born in us this day so that we might continue to be that cutting edge congregation of the United Church of Christ, that cutting edge that reminds itself over and over again that there is more work to be done, there are systems to be brought down and oppressed people to be released. Just as we were released, just as those who were held in captivity 2,000 years ago were released through the message of Jesus, so in this Christmas season, we must be in the work of offering hope in resistance, a resistance of the powers that be, a resistance to just be like everybody else, a resistance. For there are many who are looking to us this day to be that prophetic voice. Just as the prophets would speak Jesus into existence, we must prophesy and bring faith into existence, hope into existence, love into existence, joy into existence. Those are the themes of the Advent Gospels, the Advent story. And I pray that we will offer that ourselves and offer it to a world who is begging, begging us to be that vibrant, inclusive, progressive congregation of the United Church of Christ, to be that beacon of hope in the world, and to speak truth in love so that one day we all would find hope and be free. God bless you, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, as we live through this Advent season together. 
and rethink this story, not just a story that is a beautiful picture on a Christmas card, but a story that lives and breathes and moves us with urgency to proclaim Christ through faith, hope, and love. May it be so this day and in the days to come as we celebrate Christmas is. Amen. When we were chilled by despair, Jesus came to warm us with your hope. When we huddled against the cold winds of fear, Jesus wrapped us in the protection of your hopes and dreams. When we could find no life, Jesus walked to a cross-strewn hillside, scattering sin's power, sending the grave away empty-handed, and greeting us with the promise of resurrection. Holy is your name, God of hope. Blessed is Christ, your child, our Savior, and we give you praise and glory. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, he gave it thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks for it, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This is my life, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember the word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in Christ's death and resurrection, and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering to us. Let us pray. Holy God, send your spirit to move over your people, filling this bread and cup with your presence. May the bread we break and share become the healing we need and the hope we carry to a broken world. May this cup we bless be the peace for which we have yearned and the joy we can offer to everyone we meet. For all praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh,
Cathedral of Hope, what a wonderful way to begin this Advent season as we think about hope and resistance. And as we come to the end of this service, I want to invite you to remain faithful to the mission and work of this church, to give of your time, your talent, and your treasure, and to know that when you give, you are making a difference, not just in this local church, but to the world in which we exist. So I pray that you will thoughtfully and passionately give to the ministry of this church, as well as to pray constantly for what is being revealed through us, proclaiming Christ through faith, hope, and love. And now, unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given, and the blessing of God, known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain through us, now and forevermore. Happy Advent, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. Amen.